Howdy, I'm Sadie May with the Awesome Orange, and this week I'm gonna show you how I built a concrete coffee table. And not just any concrete coffee table. This one, you don't need to lift any heavy bags of concrete in order to make awesome. You wanna see how I did it? Well, let's get started. I've always wanted a concrete coffee table, but lifting all those heavy bags and creating a form and waiting for it to cure was just a little too daunting for me. So when I found some concrete feather finish, I knew I wanted to give it a try. So first step was to gather some materials. You need six two by fours, pressure treated or regular, and we'll talk more about that later. One four by eight sheet of quarter inch underlayment plywood, two boxes of the feather finish, and some Thompson's Water Seal multi-surface waterproofer, as well as some exterior rated wood screws. I use pressure treated two by fours because my coffee table is gonna be going outside, but I don't know that it was really necessary because they end up being completely covered by the end of the build. But for the couple of extra dollars, if you're gonna be putting your coffee table outside, I recommend you go with them. And as you can see, the first step in the building process is to cut all the two by fours per the cut list. If you wanna build the same size coffee table that I did, I have complete build plans available on my website with the cut list, dimensions, everything you need to know to build one of these for yourself. And I'll leave a link in the description box below. Now that the two by fours are cut, it's time to assemble them. I'm gonna be using my Craig 720 Pro pocket hole jig and making one and a half inch pocket holes on the shorter cross supports. I love the dust collection and the easy clamping on this new model pocket hole jig. Once those are all drilled, I'm gonna be assembling them using two and a half inch wood screws that are rated for the outdoors. And I'm using one of my Pony F-Style clamps to hold the boards in place as I drive the screws in. You'll notice here that this is the bottom frame and it only has two cross supports. That because it's only for structural purposes and it's not gonna have concrete on it. So we don't need to worry about any of the underlayment flexing or anything like that. Now on to assembling the top frame. And this one is gonna have the four cross supports. That's because we wanna have as many points of contact for that quarter inch underlayment that's going to skin this frame and that we're gonna be putting the concrete on top of. When I was assembling this, I kind of eyeballed the spacing in between the two by fours, but if you do go ahead and get the plans for this, I have the exact spacing on there, which comes out to about four and three quarter inches approximately in between each of those. Now that the top and bottom frames are assembled, it's time to attach them together. And we're gonna be using some supports with those two and a half inch exterior rated wood screws and some butt joints. I did six supports on the long side and four on the ends. This is probably overkill, but again, I didn't want there to be any flex once we added the quarter inch underlayment on top of it. I really like using these easy hold clamps because I can close them with one hand and they hold the boards in place as I drive those screws in. Adding all these supports is definitely gonna make this frame sturdy, and it gives us lots of points of contact to eliminate flex once we add the skin. Plus it adds some weight that'll make this coffee table seem totally legit. Now 
Then lastly for the mainframe was just to attach the bottom to those uprights. Lots and lots of screws here. Get your practice. Okay, the next step was to assemble the base. And I went out to my side yard, which is a total disaster right now, but I had some saved leftover reclaimed wood from my old patio that I wanted to use as the base. I brought it into the shop, cut it down to size, and then ripped it to width on my table saw. But if you don't wanna do this, you can use two by threes to create your base. The actual dimensions of a two by three are one and a half by thick by two and a half inches wide. If you do end up using reclaimed wood, always check it for metal before running it through your saws. Mine definitely had a few nails in there and I'm glad that I caught them. I really think the rustic goodness of this reclaimed wood alongside the modern um, smooth concrete is going to look really awesome together. Once those pieces were cut, I assembled them using the one and a half inch pocket holes with the two and a half inch exterior rated wood screws. And I did sand the wood now. I did this now because once it's attached to the frame, it's gonna be very difficult to get to. And if you're gonna be painting your base or staining it, I recommend you do that now as well. All right, here's a preview of what our finished piece or at least the shape of it's gonna start looking like. Next, it was time to cut the quarter inch underlayment to skin all six sides of the frame. Since this is a big four by eight sheet and my shop was full, I ended up breaking this down into two pieces in the back of my truck using a cordless circular saw, a piece of foam and a roller stand. Then inside at the table saw, I went ahead and broke them down into their final dimensions, two side pieces, a top, a bottom and two short ends. If your table is going to be indoors, you don't really need to skin the bottom, but since mine's going outside, I wanted to close in the box so that no animals, spiders, or anything ended up making their home inside there. Now to attach the quarter inch underlayment to the frame. I put in a couple of brad nails just to hold it in place, and then I used one and a quarter inch roofing nails. I was going to use screws that I thought I had on hand, but I didn't. So I used these roofing nails and fingers crossed that the roofing nails don't pop out down the road and mess up with the concrete. But I figured roofing nails are made for outdoors and roofs, so they should be good. But if I had to do it again, I'd probably go and buy the screws. I installed the two end panels or two end sides first and then the long sides and then I attached the bottom the same way. Lots and lots of hammering. Definitely a shoulder workout for that one. Once all the panels except for the top was attached, I secured the frame to the base using two and a half inch exterior rated wood screws from the inside of the box and into the frame. I measured and marked where the screws should be placed so they didn't miss the base. Oh, and I left a nice surprise in there. Then I closed up the top the same way as I did all the other sides. Oh, you've got a giant box. Now it's time to make it awesome. Oh, and it's definitely solid. There's gonna be no flex in that top for sure once we add that concrete. All right, now for the make or break part of this project, we're gonna be finishing the top 
box part of this piece with some feather finish concrete. Taped off that reclaimed wood because we don't want to get the concrete on there. And then I mixed up the feather finish per the instructions on the box. Instructions say two to one on there. So one water and two scoops of the concrete mixture. Be sure to mix it up really good to get any lumps out of there. I didn't use a drill or anything at this point because I was mixing in really small batches. And then just start applying. I used a drywall knife to spread it onto the surface of the box and tried to keep it as smooth as possible. There's definitely an art to it and you'll definitely get a technique down with a little bit of practice. I know I did. I tried to mix enough to cover one whole side at a time, but you definitely want to mix it in small batches because this stuff dries really fast, especially if you're doing this in the summertime like I am. The consistency I liked was kind of a cross between a pancake mix and peanut butter. You'll notice on this side, my quarter inch underlayment didn't line up perfectly. So I did have to build up a little bit more on the edges here to get it the right thickness. You could possibly sand this down not to do that, but this concrete stuff says it can go up to a half an inch thick. And then just keep going and finish covering all the sides. Once it's dry, add another coat. This is gonna be a process of just building the concrete thicker and thicker as we go. On coats two and three, I paid more attention to the corners or the edges to build those up to make sure that the wood wouldn't ever show through there on the edges. I did sand in between each coat and that helped just knock down any of the rough spots and made the next coat go on even smoother. I ended up doing four coats on most of it, but this side, I really didn't like how it ended up having some stripes or lines in it. So I did end up giving it a fifth coat to cover some of those up. Then it's time to seal the concrete and the wood. Look at that reclaimed wood. To seal the concrete and the wood base, I'm gonna be using Thompson's Water Seal Multi-Surface Waterproofer. I like this because it seals both the concrete and the wood. I don't have to use two different finishes. This finish goes on milky white, but it dries clear. And most likely, I'll only need one coat on this piece. For the bigger surfaces, I tried rolling it on, but it was going on too thick and it was very thin and runny. So I didn't set in the instructions, you don't want it on there thick or else it can get tacky. So I ended up switching over to a paintbrush to remove any excess and, I'm, and using just a paintbrush for the rest of the sides. But boy, does this really bring out the cool different colors and variation in the concrete finish. Once it's dried for 24 hours, you can test it with some water. If it beads up, you don't need another coat. 
but if it sinks into the piece, you know your piece needs a second coat. The finish was so simple and I love how it turned out. I finally have the concrete coffee table I've always wanted. Thanks again to Thompson's Water Seal for sponsoring this project. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. And if you did, please make sure you hit that like button and that you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss my next awesome build. Remember, build loud, build wild, and have an awesome day.